Hello! So, what do we have in front of me here? Well, this interesting device is obviously going to be a Spectrum, but it's an Italian Spectrum. And it was used in schools and occasionally some conferences and meetings, etc. But mainly schools as a way to teach Italian students to speak English. Um, it's a well-made machine. You'll notice on the keyboard membrane, uh, not the keyboard membrane itself, that's underneath. It takes a standard keyboard membrane, just like any ordinary ZX Spectrum. And internally, it has the 4A motherboard, or 4B motherboard, which was the ones that were being produced at the time, while someone um, set up this glorious concept. Those are cassettes. They're only one-sided because the actual cassette deck itself in this unit is 8-track, which means it has four readheads. Um, and what it does, auto-reverses and plays sort of um, the next track along, and then the head drops to the next track along. So you can program between which head reads which, once you rewind it, uh, etc. Um, and on these tapes, you get... An introductory, an introduction in Italian, uh, because it would have been primarily Italian students that were playing this sort of thing. I'll press play, and uh, in a minute you'll hear it. So you've got tapes one to sixteen, and they're all fairly well numbered. So let's have a listen to a, a little bit. Buongiorno. Ho anzitutto il piacere di porgerle il benvenuto quale sottoscrittore del programma linguistico Anglo Tutor. Lei si trova in questo momento ad intraprendere un programma di apprendimento unico nel suo genere e che lei troverà tanto interessante quanto divertente. So as you can see, uh, it's introducing you on, uh, in Italian to the students on how to speak English. These are a set of lesson tapes that slot in there. Um, we can come with a nice handy cover. Now, it's a full 48K system, but we'll just rewind that. You can't load games via there, which you'll find immensely difficult, unless you mod the head slightly, which... It's a little bit of a trickery with bridging. Well, I'll just put this back into its uh, perspective place. And it was donated to us by a very fine gentleman indeed. Uh, very high quality cassette mechanism in these. As we take a closer look, you can see it's got a solid, it's even got a, a steel to support it. Clicks in very nice. Um, yeah, uh, as I was pointing out in the video, it didn't have the the colour bars, so that was not something that was straightened, that was produced specially for this. Uh, we'll go on and have a look at the back, you will notice there's no edge connector. So there's no way of plug, uh, plugging any peripherals into this. Uh, I'm sorry about my hand getting in the way there, but I am using a small Samsung. Now, composite mod, as well as RF output, a power input, the old kettle lead, a reset switch, and you've got your headphones, your microphones, and live and N, and that just basically switches the speaker from the spectrum or the two. Let's have a look. Yeah. And as you can hear, I've got dynamite done playing on this bad boy. Let's have a look a bit more about it then. Um, we've got a memory button which I haven't figured out what that does yet. Not obviously a record button. With a nice UV meter. And in this magazine there's the, the picture of the very fine Italian gentleman who's quite a good singer apparently. Um, I've heard some good recommendations. Uh, the fine gentleman that donated it to Fusion Retro Books for people to enjoy at their next crash event. He's also gave me uh, a couple of books which is full of information on Sinclair products. For instance, take a look at that. I mean, that looks spectacular. And here's the device in person. With a nice little write-up. Ah, 
featured in well, that particular magazine. This is purely mainly Spectrum content or Sinclair related content. Lots of great stuff there, but it's a unique and it's a well built machine. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing to see something like this in reality in this country. So, it came with a microphone, which you uh, obviously speak into. There's no... Uh, a Dynamic mic. And a set of matching headphones, which all come with this system. And it's a computer system. AT computer system, I suppose you pronounce that. But what a glorious and wonderful, unique spectrum indeed. It just goes to show that the Italians certainly did have real style and form. Shame you can't exactly plug a peripheral into the back and use an SD card solution. But I'm sure with a little bit of a modification that is reversible, we'll be able to load Spectrum software via this tape deck, which internally is uh, looking amazing. I suppose now that you guys would like to have a look inside one of these bad boys. So there's not much on the underneath, there is a serial number, um, this is upside down for a reason because I'm going to show you this and when I open it up it'll be the right way around. Six screws and four rubber feet there to stop it slipping off the desk. Um, I've got to get the screwdriver out, let's get these screws out one by one. All the screws are out now, there is a little bit of damage, a little bit of burning from the cable. Uh, on the actual plastic itself, that is only plastic but as we lift this away there you have it the glorious spectrum now what they've done is they've taken the coil and they've rerouted the coil over to this to move it away from there to change any feedback, uh, you can see it's a quality tape mechanism. I mean, that's one seriously hefty flywheel. There's a rather huge speaker with the main power brick attached to it. The only thing holding that in place is the bottom of the case and that one screw. <laughs> so, yes, um, then that's attached to there, which runs into couple of connections on the side but then also runs back down underneath and links with this main board which is the mixing board uh, which goes quite a way up there and there's some seriously huge capacitors in that thing uh, which is remarkable um, you've got your power on and off switch just here and then you've got your memory switch over here which changes a number of uh, settings the issue itself uh, in this one is, let's have a look, it's a 4B, so that's, uh, you know what that's about. Um, and yeah, it's quite a work of art. Then, is they have jockeyed that across and down for the RF by plugging that in. That goes into the mixing board underneath and then routes over to the tape deck as well as roots out uh, here somewhere not 100% sure but then they've also added a composite with uh, to the side by taking the ground off there and the composite feed directly to here so it doesn't have that 100 uh, uh, 100 nano uh, picofadded capacitor in one UF um, so yeah what a glorious looking machine that huge space there, which incidentally that screwed on little bit of plastic is then only used, held on there by a double sided sticky tab. A little bit weak, um, I thought maybe glue, but I think it's been made in case it's dropped that it doesn't just snap off. Where, you know, a sticky tab would probably give way. Well, let's get this thing back together. Here we go, all back together. Last view. Um, we need to put the video in. And this is unusual. We have a power on and off switch for the spectrum itself. All plugged in. Let's see if it powers up. 
it does slightly uh, there we go so what a wonderful looking machine very industrial looking machine I would say um, you know very 1970s in some respects but a very functional and quality built machine including the essential tape counter thanks for watching everybody hope you had a enjoyable different video this time round uh, a look at the european hardware available sinclair starley didn't see them doing this with a commodore anytime soon but who knows maybe they did